Hello, uh, my name's Neil, welcome to Nature Drive, welcome to my garden here in Ensham in uh, Oxfordshire. Today I'm going to be showing you around this garden, it's, it's nine years old, uh, we moved in as a new build and I want to show you what's, what's been achieved over the last nine years. So my daughter Sap is uh, happily recording this uh, and if you want to find out any more information visit my.naturehood.uk. Okay, so the first protocol is my pond, my, my pride and joy, so if you come over here What you'll see here, we have a fairly decent sized pond. Um, if I could give one tip is dig a pond. If you dig a pond, nature will come. Um, what we've got here uh, is a nature friendly pond. There are, there are no fish in the pond for starters and uh, they're a shallow size to allow nature to come in and out of the pond very easily. Uh, we also have lots of uh, native plants. So I visited the local river, the River Thames, and uh, put in reeds and water mint We've got loose drive here, so lots of plants uh, to help uh, oxygenate the water. As a result, we've got lots of uh, newts, so many newts in this pond, frogs, all the usual critters like dragon and damselfly nymphs, and, and the star of the show actually is a grass snake, which um, you see the water feature just here, it quite often hides behind there, um, waiting uh, to come out, uh, it usually arrives around spring, and takes a share of the, the newts, I guess, all part of the, the circle of life. So uh, that's the star uh, performer in our pond. I'm just going to take you around the back here. Um, one consideration, obviously, if you have small children, uh, there are safety considerations about a pond, but if you can dig one, then that's fantastic. This is our, our second pond, uh, which is even wilder, really. I'm, I'm going to, on live uh, stream, try and see if we can catch anything. Uh, the odds Wait, but let's have a little look. Oh, let's have a look. Have we got anything in there? No, I'm going to go again. We're going to go again. Look at it. Go around the edges a bit. Oh, yes, we've got a baby newt. I don't know if you can see this little little critter there. So, just there, but I'm not going to keep him out of the water very long. So, lots of babies, um, lots of wildlife in this garden. Right, let me take you on to the, the second part of the garden, which is our compost corner. Come this way. We're going to be accompanied by our dog, Uma. Here we have our fantastic compost heap. I must admit we don't tend to use the compost, it's more for wildlife. I put all my grass cuttings and, and various cuttings onto this pile. We also have some dead wood down the side here, which we use. And this is fantastic for wildlife. Uh, very popular with the reptiles in particular. This is the secret why we have a grass snake, I believe, because they like to lay their eggs in rotted vegetation. The heat keeps the eggs warm. And we also find lots of um, slow worms in here, which look like snakes, but are actually uh, legless lizards. So what I do tend to do is put this metal wheelbarrow on top because it retains the heat and reptiles love surfaces which retain the heat. Quite often, um, if you go on a walk, you'll see a corrugated a metal sheet on the ground that's for various snakes like adders to crawl under and warm themselves so we're going to have a look um, it's probably a bit early in the morning for anything to be under there but we'll we'll take a look anyway south and see what see what's here so let's just lift this up have we got any little critters i don't think we do i'm just gonna have a little look into here no, nothing today. I must admit, yesterday I took a look and there was a baby grass snake, would have, which would have been absolutely amazing to capture uh, on this, but that's the joys of live, live TV. Um, so, I've covered the pond, I've covered the compost heap. Uh, the next piece is the secret weapon of this garden, and that's the corridor, okay? So when this house was built, uh, there is an older estate at the back here, uh, and they wanted to retain uh, access to their back fences. So if you just pass me that, what we have over the top here is a wildlife corridor. It's actually for people, but it turns out to be fantastic for um, wildlife. Um, we often hear badgers and foxes and who knows what running up and down this, uh, this corridor. Uh, it's also great for hedgehogs. So we have uh, cut holes into the fence here and along various points of the fence to allow the hedgehogs to come in. Uh, they make their way into the garden. They love the beetles from the dead wood. And in fact, if I can find it, hedge, hedgehog poop, so proof, proof that we do have hedgehogs in the garden. 
Um, also, we have a home for the winter. So a few years back, um, I created this hedgehog house. I made a few for the neighbors and ourselves. They're pretty very popular. Again, on the Naturehood website, I think you can find out how to, to build these. What's quite important is if you can have a, a small tunnel uh, because that stops cats and so forth getting in, allows the hedgehogs to access. And inside, if you just come and have a look, um, you can put lots of dry leaves and so on to keep the uh, hedgehogs warm in the winter. Right, next stop is the, the trees and the plants. As I say, uh, when we moved in, there were just two, two trees here, elder trees, uh, which are over here. So we had quite a lot of planting to do to make the garden look pretty and nice. So lots of flowers, lots of shrubs, lots of trees. Oops, that's knocked off an apple. Um, so yeah, where, where possible, we've tried to put in native, native plants. So this is a rowan tree, for example, over here. I've also started to create a bit of a hedge. Um, so just some hawthorn whips which are put in uh, to make that happen. But we've also been quite practical. So if we just take a step back, we have two non-native trees here. These are twisted willows. And the reason we chose these uh, is that they, they grow very quickly. So I needed somewhere to put my hammock uh, within a year or two of moving in. So these went in. So it's not always native, but um, we try to do that where we can. Um, we are very lucky in that we're surrounded by trees. My favourite tree, which you might even be able to hear, it sounds like, we call it the ancient waterfall, it sounds like a waterfall, it's a poplar tree um, and it really, um, really attracts a lot of wildlife, so red kites and woodpeckers and so forth, so we're, we're very lucky to have that. Um, being surrounded by all these trees, it means we get lots of cell sets and that's something we encourage, so natural processes. Here we have a sycamore tree which has found its way here. There's some ash trees also at the back of the pergola, so lots of trees. If you look along as we move along, lots of trees, self-setting hawthorns, um, holly, and very various other trees. So yeah, here's, here's a holly, there's another hawthorn down below. And bizarrely, we've also got a walnut tree, uh, which has appeared from somewhere. Leaves smell really nice. Uh, well, maybe a squirrel dropped a walnut or something like that, I don't know. Okay, so... That brings us then onto the lawn. Um, as I say, when we moved here, um, there was nothing. It was just builder's rubble with a scattering of soil over the top. So we put some soil down. I put a, a normal lawn down, as you do, turfed it. Um, but we've been very relaxed about letting what some people call weeds into the garden. I call them wildflowers. Um, so if I just bring you over here. If you see, for example, here we have... Uh, this is usually covered in... in um, Daisies in the spring, you can see the, the petals, uh, the, sorry, the leaves. And in fact, there's one, one last uh, dan uh, daisy left there. Um, we also have clover, we have plantains, we have dandelions. I think uh, a, a lawn looks much more uh, appealing with these flowers. It also retains uh, the water much better and of course is better for pollinators. So we tend not to mow the garden in, in April, May, uh, in sort of late June, we might consider mowing it a bit like a meadow. Uh, one interesting plant, which we've we started to see, um, a good example, is ragwort. So this is, uh, has been growing, uh, sometimes has a bit of a bad reputation with farmers as being poisonous to, to cattle. It's made, made mildly toxic, uh, but what it does is attract certain species. So this year these have been covered in orange and black striped caterpillars. Um, that's the cinnabar moth, uh, hello, hello Ula. Um, it's the cinnabar moth uh, caterpillar, so they only eat this plant. And they've got that classic danger si uh, signal of yellow and black or orange and black um, because they actually absorb the toxicity from that plant which keeps the predators away um, what else can i show you okay yes like many other gardens we feed birds so uh, if you come over here what we try and do is provide uh, a variety of uh, feeding stations so we have seeds uh, in the hanging uh, vessel here we have uh, fat balls we have a uh, platform and we have um, you know, bird tables and everything else so uh, as well as putting seed on the grass so we get lots of different bird species in the garden uh, my favorite is a sparrow hawk which you sometimes see uh, shooting down the back there and then I suppose the, the final thing to show you uh, is we, we grow our own produce where we can so we have our tomatoes we've got salad here obviously it's the end of the year so they're all looking a bit ragged now we've got our apple trees there's some apples just there actually 
Um, so yeah, we try and try and use the garden to have a bit of food as well. So in summary, for, for nature, if I were to give you three tips, the first would be, if you can, build a pond. Obviously, small children be aware, but if you build a pond, nature will come. Secondly, think about connectivity. We're quite lucky we have this corridor along the back of the garden, but even if you can put holes in with your neighbours, that will allow species like hedgehogs to travel. They can travel several miles in an evening, so that really opens up the available land for them. And thirdly, don't be so tidy. So um, you can see in our lawn we've allowed what people call weeds. I, weeds are plants which you don't want to be there. So if you're welcoming all plants, you've got no weeds. It, it also saves you a lot of work and effort. Similarly with the self sets, we just let nature take its course where we can and try and live uh, with the grain of nature. So uh, that's our tour of our garden uh, in Ensham. If you've got any questions, please do put them on Facebook and I'll answer them after this. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much and do visit my.naturehood.uk.